Twiddly dee, twiddly dum, not gonna work. I sit on my bum, well, there's none of that. They're getting the job done, Kathy Cat. The summer times go, ah, because it's so humid. But then winter times go, mm, delightful. Hey. 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 hey, podcast kittens, it's Kathy Cat. Ah, my bed coming at you with another link over freezing in summer. Cat, my bed. How are you? I am great. How are you doing oh, today? Thank well, you very we are much. gonna go and show you what oh. you can do in Japan in winter. So if you're coming to Japan in winter, we got you covered because we're gonna tell you what you can do. Uh, there's some really cool things happening this year. Don't miss out on them. They might not be happening next year. So check it out. Sorry, I interrupted. Mm, it's fine. It's an, um, awesome stuff happening. A thousand years of frost and freezing. The winter of discontent. Now, Christmas and winter is a little bit celebrated a little bit differently than it would, for example, be in Germany. Mm. We have our Christmas markets, yeah. which is a very German institution. It's there. Yeah. We really know how to make the cold season warm with lots of Christmas markets, glue wine, mm. gifts, and presents. It's very, very warm and fuzzy and Christmas treats. Mm. What happens on Christmas in Australia? Well, it's hot. Yeah. It's real hot. Do you have like Christmas trees? What do you do? Yeah, you have a tree if you like, that's fine. You must literally stick up a tree, mm -hmm. make sure it doesn't catch fire. So yeah, um, you put up a tree, but then we, uh, um, we, you can have turkey. Some people have turkey, but a lot of the time we have ham because it's hot outside. Mm -hmm. So you see something cold, you see what I'm saying? So you have ham and then we go out to the backyard and we play backyard cricket and or table tennis as your setup allows. So it's like a summer party with the Christmas theme. Some theme. people go to the beach. If you're a beach person, go to the beach, swim on Christmas day. That's good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cricket, Australians like, like abbreviated forms of cricket, you know, in the backyard or on the beach or something like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. That is a very, very different it's way heaps to different the from, It's heaps different from Northern Hemisphere Christmas, let me tell you. So there is a lot of new trends this year. Some mm -hmm. are actually inspired by the Panini pandemic, but Panini. others are inspired by just general changes that happened in Japanese culture. So there's more than what you maybe thought was happening. Mm -hmm. But of course, every year in winter in Japan, you will be delighted to behold the illumination. Illumination. When, if I say this to an English person, do you know what an illumination is? Well, we know what the word, the verb to illuminate, we know what illumination is, but just using it in the way the Japanese use, you know, the Japanese English illumination. It means like a light display. Yeah, it's yeah. like a light up, I, like light it's, up the city, you have lots of sparkly lights. Yeah, it's uh, because the air is different in winter here, isn't it? The air gets like cleaner, Very dry, and crisper, and dry. So therefore lights somehow look particularly beautiful compared with the rest of the year. Huh? Okay, well, I, I never saw it like that. I think have lights never, always look never, pretty. Have but... you never experienced that? Like, compared with the summertime, the summertime's all, ah, because it's so humid. But then winter time is all, because it's so dry. So the lights come through the air, through the atmosphere in a different way, and they really do look spectacular. I don't know. Cute lights always, I like cute lights in all seasons, but it kind of- Work with me, Kathy Cat. Uh, I do Work like with me. No, no lights. I like lights in all seasons. The, but... So they do, they'll light the place up. So, so Shijuku, light the place up. Shibuya, light the place up. They have yeah, special places the place where you kind of get invited to go to, to have a stroll, ideally with someone holding hands. Ooh, or <laughs> with your pet pigeon. Yes, you can go there with your pet pigeon, your best friend friend or maybe, maybe your gingerbread man. Oh, or a special somebody, hey? Mm -hmm. Maybe someone you're a little bit interested in, hey, hey, hey? So this kind of great date spots during winter, but actually you can also enjoy it just by yourself because you can take amazing pictures, what they do, for example, in Harajuku, the whole Omoto Sando Street down. You will, you want to go shopping, but you just get caught by the view of like, this alley of streets just mm. lined, they wrap it around every tree. It takes hours and hours to wrap all that stuff around yeah. the trees and they do it every year and then they take it down. They're not lazy like we do in Europe and just leave it up or whatever. <laughs> Nope, they take it down after all of that effort. It's beautiful. And there are some spots you should visit and go to because it will be catching your breath. Yeah, actually, so on the point you just made, mm. and it happens everywhere. Like in my you know, small little suburb that I live in, they'll wrap the trees in lights and everything. It's, it's a huge operation that happens everywhere every year. Mm. It must create a lot of jobs, this light 
right? Or it's only a team of three people that have just have to spend a, to a lot of time to get all those trees wrapped. Yeah. Usually you need a crane. You only I only see generally just one crane around. And yeah, I see cranes. All of this up. It But takes a long time. Really, they it's meticulously illuminate all the trees. So our first hotspot. What do we got, Cat? Oh. I was actually going to say in America, there's like a big deal about like switching on the tree lights. Oh, like okay, do a yeah, countdown. yeah, yeah. You probably have something like that. While in Harajuku and such and loads of places, it will just be boop, it's on. The Christmas tree is sometimes not the centerpiece. They will have maybe one here or there, but it's just the amount of lights will be surprising. Mm -hmm. It's literally for kilometers, just yeah. beautiful lights. It's really spectacular, really. So one very very famous one is the Ao no Dokutsu. Yep. It is the blue. <laughs> Cave, and that is in Shibuya. Mm -hmm. That one actually, you can walk for a long park. You go like in your Yogi Park. It's, it's like vivid blue light. Everything is generally themed in just one color, which mm -hmm. I think is actually really classy. Mm. And if you're there at the right time, they will also last year. What they did is they put down a reflecting kind of flooring uh, in that park, so ooh. it would reflect the light. So you have it wow. on the trees and also on the floor. Wow! Everything, it was beautiful. And they actually cover it during the day so it doesn't get too dusty and yeah. grimy. And then they uncover it. And if you're very lucky and you go there, that's my hint, you go there after it's just been raining a bit and will reflect it even uh, more. So it will be below you and overhead everywhere. Everything will be sparkling blue. It's beautiful. That's delightful, isn't it? Ooh. What a concept. It's like, again, a lot of effort they put into this. Really. Yeah, and look how many bobs there are. Oh, my, there are freaking 770 thousand individual light bulbs that get used in this bad boy. That's a lot. So Bananas, it, prepare yourself for a nice stroll. There sometimes will be stores so you can buy something, maybe get yourself some hot cocoa and walk down and have a look. Mm. So that was definitely a big one. The next one is in Meguro in Tokyo. Me, 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 Meguro. And it's me, 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 na no illumination. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the entire area along the Meguro River is huge. That's usually where the cherry blossom trees are. Yeah. So it's actually a smaller path. It's not yeah. as wide as the one you had in Yoyogi, but they have approximately. Oh mate, was that three three hundred eighty thousand bright pink light bulbs? So they are supposed to remind you of the cherry blossoms because they are wound around the cherry blossom mm. trees. So it's like a winter cherry blossom walk that you can do to look at all those lights instead of everything being blue. Everything will be pink. Yes, I tell you what, that river really is beautiful when you see it lit up. It's spectacular. So I haven't seen that yet. Maybe this year I'll manage to oh, get over there. Oh, you're gonna get down there, bro. It's freaking nice. Megoro, the, the river there is nice all year round, but then when they light it up, it really is like, holy moly, it's delightful. Mm, delightful. Hey. Hey. hey! What's number three? Well, if you feel like traveling a little bit out of Tokyo because you don't like the big crowds, there is a hint here that is to go to Sagamihara in Kanagawa Prefecture, and there's a place called the, the Sagami Lake Resort Pleasure Forest. Oh, yeah. They they chose that name without really double checking it, in my opinion. It's just my experience that the Japanese use the word pleasure without really understanding the way it gets used in English. Yeah. The first line of the Pongaraku Nichiwa is pleasure. Pleasure. It's the first word I sing in that song. Yeah. yeah. Pleasure. Well, the pleasure um, forest. So the. The Pleasure Forest is like an amusement park. Actually, a lot of, let's be honest, a lot of amusement parks all over Japan will during the season because, let's be honest, there's not so much like flowers or anything you can do in amusement parks. They will do like a light up illumination display. So if you look around, there will probably other parks will do the same, but Sagami Ono is currently doing a themed one, which might be fun. Um, when I went, there during my birthday last year. So they even had that in March. They had some light. There's like a, a normal light up that they have all through the year and then they change it during winter. And guess what? This year is also kind of blue. Who's everyone's favorite blue mascot character in Japan? Da -da 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 -da. I don't know what sound he makes. <laughs> That's definitely not the right. It is blue. It is a cat robot and everyone knows that cat robot in Japan, but maybe not so much abroad. Cat but with beard? Cat with beard? No, yes, it's cat with beard theme. Let's, let's go for that. It is actually Doraemon. Doraemon! Doraemon's got his, his, hers, their, Doraemon has their own light display in Kanagawa. Tie up, because the movie is going to be out soon. Nobita's Earth Symphony. That's the new uh, Doraemon movie. Mm. So um, the event's going to feature a uh, fantastic and a lively illumination depicting Doraemon and all his mates. So something yes. for both the kids, both your little mates, and the adults. 
both the wrinklies and the somewhere in the middles can enjoy. They actually beat the other ones because they have six million LED lights because oh, there have bro. already so many like all year that they display. <sighs> when I went in March, they had like special Salem one one. So they actually built the Crystal Palace Castle. They oh, built wow. that out of light. It was beautiful. I cried. It was wonderful. So they know what they're doing there at the Pleasure Forest. No oh, Pleasure Forest. They know what's up on the Pleasure Forest. <laughs> And uh, let's move back to Sumidaku in Tokyo because there is a light up that is very much aimed at foreign tourists, mm -hmm. actually. That's right. Well, you tourists, you tourists. It's for yeah. you. It's to, to attract more, more mm -hmm. and more of the foreign tourists to come yeah. during winter mm -hmm. and not just during the chair blossom time to Asakusa. Mm -hmm. So Terrible Railway is holding this event and it's focusing on lighting the Sumida River Walk. Yep, the Sumida River Walk. That's yes. another beautiful river, actually. Yeah, it's Lovely. a very big one. And I mean, Asakusa is like an area where everyone goes to sooner or later. So mm -hmm. that's actually something to do while you're there. Asakusa, just so you know, if you don't know, it's like the most kind of kitsch touristy bit of Tokyo. Yeah, it? it's like like a lot of like traditional culture is like cramped in Asakusa. A lot of you will sooner or later go there. That's you like the place a to go to. Have a rickshaw ride in Asakusa. That's the way they got Kaminarimon. Mm, all old. of very really traditional stuff yeah, yeah, there, yeah. and they have like a lot of the traditional entertainment used to be there yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. So they will light the Sumida River Walk in some other places with bamboo lanterns. Bamboozled! A little bit more romantic than blue lights with Doraemon, in is my opinion. Is that more romantic, the blue lights of Doraemon? Yeah, I think so. Because the, there is a picture, I'm not sure if we can blend that in, but the picture looks pretty impressive. So very different. Instead of lots of little light bulbs, they put the light inside the bamboo that has like little holes uh, cut I out see. and oh, it will like shine lovely. through. And a gentle light. Sounds lovely. Oh, well, you know, I understand. Yeah, that looks... Oh, now I understand this picture better now that you've explained that. Yes. Oh, okay, I see. You can that also really make your lovely. own bamboo lantern making experience. Get out of here, really? And there's a night walking tour in English for free! What? Hop onto that, guys. Well, that is for free. So that is new and that is for free. And it's aimed at people like you who are listening to this in English. You! But I'm sure Japanese you. people can join it too. So if you're Japanese and your English is very good and you listen to us right now, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you you This would be the most confusing English lesson ever. Can you imagine <laughs> listening to this thing? I'll oh, practice my English. Hey, yeah. Well, it's realistic. It's, wah, it's beard wah, English. Wah, 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 wah. No, seriously. Start. <laughs> Continue learning with Kat. Yeah, continue learning. I'm so grammatically incorrect in everything I say. We're not, we're not saying that. Just, just, just get, just get. It's realistic. Uh, it's realistic. Not, no one speaks perfect grammar. New trend among Gen Z. Gen Z, yes. Hokans. 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 Uh, explain it, what that is, Kat. Yeah. It is a combination of the word Hotel, hotel. So that's the ho comes from, mm -hmm. and cans come vacance, mm -hmm. vacation in French. Mm -hmm. So they kind of go hotel vacation. Mm -hmm. So oh, hotel vacation. that's the, the Gen Zs are starting to do that because, as the digital natives, as some people call them, <laughs> it's a new way to spend the holidays yeah. uh, and with the emphasis on spending time together in mm -hmm. a hotel in a pleasant and comfortable environment rather than going out to a party. Reason for that being. Pandemic panini, you weren't supposed to go see many people. Plague! Exactly, because of the plague, Gen Z's came up with a new idea and they're just, in, instead of going to Christmas parties and all those shenanigans, because you weren't really allowed to do that for the last couple of years, they decided to, well, let's just head to a hotel and mm. have a holiday there. It's like a close holiday, it's away from home, so, so you're not at home. But you're also not going too far away, mm. which was also frowned upon in Japan. We got told not to travel too far, right, so. Especially if you are from Tokyo, there was this real discrimination against oh, yeah. Tokyo dwellers from the rest of the country. Oh yeah, if you went oh. outside of Tokyo somewhere and people asked you where you where you live and you said Tokyo, people gave you the they were stinky really like, eye. Really? I mean, it's changed now, but the tradition has apparently stayed. The only thing I'm thinking with the Gen Zs is like, how do you afford that? Because right now, hotels with the influx of foreign tourists. Real expensive tourists, at the moment, yeah. It's very expensive. Real they expensive have some rich moment. mommies and daddies, so they're working quite hard. So it's a part time job to make they're that affordable. They're working hard. The youth, the youth of the nation, they ain't no slackers. Uh, they ain't no twiddly dee, twiddly dumb, not gonna work. I sit on my bum, there's none of that. They're getting the job done, Kathy Cat. They're laboring. They're in the mines, extracting some salt. Suzu from my group, she's a big fan of the old Hokans. She, uh, oh, right. look at her Twitter. She's always putting up photos of her old Hokans. Hokans, okay, so apparently that's cool now. Some of those hotels have now special packages. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. stay a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. You can read some manga. Yep. It, it, 
the, from the description, it sounds a little bit like a manga cafe plus hotel experience. Yeah, a you know, bit treats. classier than a manga cafe. They tend to be pretty horrendous places. The uh, manga cafes, yeah, smoke so, and whatnot. But apparently, you get like mangas and movies and all kind of that. things. So you kind of like have. So they have special packages. And yeah. some hotels have also special deals in winter to get the people to come and yep. have some fun. <laughs> a bit of good times, as it were. Yes. Yep. So you can do. You can do. Go. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. I broke my safety pin, my paper clip. Oh my god. Because you can do um oshi katsudo. So like your oshi, your celebrity or whatever that you want to support, they'll like deck out the room. If you're into what's the leader of BCS, John Cook. Is that his name? John Cook. What's his name? Shiro. John Cook. John Cook. If you're into him. And you want to have like John Cook night? They'll deck your hotel room out in John Cook stuff. For I think you. it's a good idea for like Josh guy idea. So you get like all the girls together. They can all celebrate him and celebrate him for Christmas mm -hmm. and feel as if he's there with them. Maybe get some cake in and have like a Christmas event with him. Maybe light it up like dynamite. Ah! Hey, you went there. Ikebukuro Sunshine Prince Hotel actually has a special one right now because Attack on Titan has just aired and ended. This is absurd. This episode feels like it was one big advertisement for di various different things, doesn't it? Well, if you're coming to Japan, Especially you want to explore, just get to there. Names. So yeah, Sunshine Prince Hotel, what they're doing is because Attack on Titan has just finished over after 10 years or something and it's yeah. been a big deal for a long time um and that hotel is actually because it's the birthday of levi ackerman on december 25th ah, levi there will be a commemorative photo spot if you go to that hotel and a levi ackerman christmas cake to enjoy in your room that actually has like a printed picture of him oh, on there the he cake is, I see. that might be edible i'm not quite sure it might be edible oh so. just you know just Try and eat it no matter what. Only Bigger 200 fun. people, uh, apparently. Uh, Only 200 people? Get that. So That'll be an expensive popular. cake. It's going to be limited edition. Oh, limited edition cake. But the, also another reason I think why Ikebukuro Sunshine Prince Hotel is doing that because Ikebukuro has the Otome Road. The, nah. It's an area. It's like the Akihabara for girl otakus is in that area. And a lot of girl otakus love Levi. So it makes yeah. sense to tailor to them mm -hmm. in, in that matter in that area. So that was very, very clever. Up here for thinking down there for dancing. Good job. Next one, we're gonna go to Bunkyaku in Tokyo to Jinzanzo. Jinzanzo. What a great hotel, by the way. That place oh, is beautiful. Oh, it's fantastic. You've been there? Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. Were you going for an event too? Because there was Did a we little... go for an event? No, I went for an event. I'm sure if you did. No, nah, I, mean, I think I just went event. for lunch. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. They have great lunch there. They have great mm -hmm. afternoon teas there. Mm -hmm. They also have great. Uh, events there. I went there for a Lolita fashion event. Oh, yeah? So they have a huge, beautiful garden, and that garden is the bomb because there's something you can do when you go there. You don't have to stay at the hotel to enjoy the garden. I think you can just go in with the restaurant, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure about that. But they have the Tokyo Sea of Clouds Ooh, there. This looks remarkable. Just look at this photo. It looks so beautiful. So, with they try to create a condition like their beautiful Japanese style garden that they have. Mm -hmm. And in winter, they have like, they create an artificial aurora there. Mm. Don't ask me how they're doing that, but it's it illuminated from six different directions. It has six layers of light, multicolored gradation. It is quite fascinating. And you might want to Google that and see how you can get into that. Because yeah. that is quite cool. Really, that seems like the kind of thing that only Japan could figure out how to really nail yeah. an artificial aurora. That's the kind of thing that Japan's going to really do a good job of. I've got really good experiences with the staff in that hotel too. It's yeah. huge. And like during events when everyone's dressed in like poofy dresses, everyone's very nice and professional. And you say they've good afternoon tea there as well. Mm -hmm, lovely. Uh, the first time I ever saw the uh, the, the Hotaru, the fireflies was there. Oh, they have fireflies there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the summertime, it's totally wow. not appropriate for this episode. But yeah, in the summertime, they have Hotaru viewing so you can go see the fireflies. Wow, wow, impressive. Yeah. Well, we're staying with the hotel since we started with the whole hotel thing. There is the Mandarin Oriental Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And it holds a countdown party on New Year's Eve. So we're moving a little bit away from Christmas, but it's still winter. So there's a countdown party themed freezing. modern Japanese masquerade party. Masquerade! So you can wear the Japanese masks, which are with, or with the tradition of fox masks. Oh, yeah, right. There's a lot of masks in Japan, but the fox mm. masks are like very, like lots used recently at Japanese summer festivals and stuff as well. So fox, fox masks. They love foxes. Japan loves the fox. Yeah, there's a one a night only masquerade ball. Mm -hmm. You have some jazz music mm -hmm. and traditional koto sounds. Now the old koto, back to the koto. Mm. Bring it old Mojimi. Hey, 
Keep your wives under lock because uh, she's gonna try and kill them. Keep your husbands under lock because she's gonna try and steal them. Oh, Mojimi with her koto. Ah, that was an autumn episode. If you missed the open episode, an episode, be free to tune one episode back and find out what Lady Bird is talking about. Just skip from one big old season to the next, didn't we? There are tons of other events oh. that you can find, but what I find really interesting is the fusion of the Shinto religion and Christianity, because apparently in some Shinto shrines, we have a bit of a fusion happening here. So there's a thing called Goshuin. Okay. Um, and usually you have a book called the Goshuin Cho. So it's like a seal stamp with this visitor. So if you go to a shrine and you're like, oh, I don't need a talisman and I don't need this or that, but I kind of want to mem- remember that I went here before. Mm. You can get a little slip of paper on which, for example, the shrine or a shrine maiden will like sign on it in a beautiful way. Mm. It's a really nice paper. And they will also put the date there. So you always remember, I went there, I've been to that shrine and look at the beautiful handwriting. It's mm. a bit of a collection in a way. And that they make special ones for around Christmas. Around well, Chrissy. Yes. This one looks like a Santa Claus fish or something. So What's you, going on here? So you have like a fusion of maybe that god or deity there with like a special print on the background. I just found that so interesting because like there might be a Santa Claus on it or like mm. some stockings, which is clearly yeah. not Shinto religion. Yeah, good point. So but holy. they're like, you know, live and let live, which I really appreciate which in Japanese lovely. cultures. There is no like, oh, you're not allowed to do that cult, that religion. They're very peaceful. It's a lot of live and let live. And so you can collect a special Koshuin show during Christmas season only then to actually put that into your little book and carry that around. Remember, when you open the book, ah, look at that beautiful handwriting. That's the date. That's the name of the shrine. And look at that, a Christmas tree. Have you done that? Goshuinchu. I have a Goshuinchu. I did not know about the Christmas Goshuinchu collecting. So if you, for example, go on a trip like Kyoto, that's fantastic because there's so many shrines and so many places where you can get your little Goshuinchu and collect them. It's beautiful. It's like a Shinto version of the train stamps where you go to different uh, locations yes. and you That's get a stamp time. in your book. It's like the similar version of that in the Shinto way. And you looked at me because I hit the table. No, I didn't. Yeah. All right, I okay, was just, yeah. I was just trying to... <laughs> Caught me out hitting the table. I just the did the same time as me. you did, we'll both do it at the same time. Ready? Three, two, yeah, yeah, one. Yeah. That was not the same time, but we tried. That is some of, some of the things to do in winter here, but generally illuminations are like the biggest thing that people do. People mm-hmm. will like meet up for it and there will be a lot of Christmas parties, a lot of colleagues coming together, a thing called Bone and Kai. Which bon is and the, Kai. I guess at the end of the year, everyone comes together, yep. has some drinks and says, let's forget the year and start a new one. Forget the year. Forget the perils, the horrors of the year gone by. Yeah, yeah. yeah so just forget the year, have some yeah. fun. So the the end of the, the year is party. busy with mm. a lot of like office parties. Yeah, lots of office parties, eh? No, oh, same probably brought as well. And that's winter in Japan! Yes! That's your Japanicle frostbite! That's your Japanicle! Do you want to build a snowman? That's, hey, hey, me. That's what happens when you come to the land of the rising fun for a little bit of frostbite. It's going to be quite cold when you come here, but the lights and the great foods and all those events will keep you warm. Bring a jacket. My first year here, the whole winter, my first year here, I was just in shorts the whole time. Everyone I knew was like, you must have Scottish heritage. I was like, I just couldn't be bothered putting anything warmer on. Yeah, well, fair enough. Mm. Okay, well, we hope that you have a nice warm winter and we see you soon with another episode of Can't Win Big!